Hello Vinyl Community and anyone else watching this. I'm back with another video. This time it's my second, I believe, in a series I'm calling Five from the Shelf, where I'm just pulling, not randomly, things I want to hear, things I've never heard, things that I'm like, I should hear this. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about them. It's not reviews really. I'm just going to give my thoughts and maybe a recommendation and I, I don't know, just talk about music and records and it's something I'm not that good at but you know I, I, I give it a shot. So I hope everybody out there is doing well and uh, let's just get started. And the first one, believe it or not, because of the recent re-release I decided I'd give this a play. And believe it or not, I'd never heard this album in its entirety. I've had this for a while. This is the um, Target exclusive of Nirvana's Nevermind album. Take it out of the shrink. Well, the plastic is in the shrink. It is the Target exclusive. It's on silver vinyl. And believe it or not, I'd never played this whole album before. I'm not a grunge guy, you know. But the thing is, when I did play it, I knew about 80% of the tracks on the album. I didn't think I knew that many, but I did. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Not being a Nirvana guy, not being a grunge guy, there's the vinyl. And the reason I played this is because this just got re-released as a 30th anniversary edition. And there was some controversy because apparently a lot of those small stores that pre-ordered it didn't get it. Um, they all went to the big box stores, and um, so a lot of orders weren't being fulfilled, and people were like, I can't get this album, but Walmart's got 10 copies, you know, it, <laughs> Amazon's got thousands of copies in their warehouse, and it was really weird, but apparently, that was, this was cut, the new one, from digital tapes, and it doesn't sound that well, and this pressing, I think it's mastered by Bernie Grunman, is the one to get. So, um, and Targets, some Targets still have these. I don't think it's quite out of print yet, but just about. So if you need a Nirvana and you're thinking about getting the 30th anniversary, you might want to check out the Target exclusive. Or just this version. It doesn't have to be the Target exclusive. Like the one at Walmart would be mastered by Bernie Grunman too. Or I forget, it might not be Bernie, it might be somebody else. But somebody good mastered this, and it's it's a good pressing of the record. Talking about it a little bit, um, I don't know what else to say. You guys probably know this record better than I do. But it wasn't as angry as I always imagined it is. And again, I knew probably 80% of the songs on it, and um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fairly good listen. I should put some music on. Uh, there we go. Uh, anyway, so that's the first one, Nirvana's Nevermind. Um, I liked it. Um, like I said, better than I ever thought I would. Now, you guys that know me are going to laugh at this one. Um, but I would never listened to it in its entirety. I, this was sealed when I got it. I opened this. I have an opening video for this album somewhere back a long time ago. But this is the Osmond's Crazy Horses. And um, this was sealed when I got it. It is a promo DJ copy. And I opened it up. And it has the original inner sleeve. And um, it's white label promo. So I couldn't have been happier when I opened this, seriously. Um, so I have a, you know, near mint copy of the Osmond's Crazy Horses. And I played it. I played a couple tracks on it before. Whoa. But it's an album that I'd never heard in its entirety. What did I think of this album? I love this album. Um, this, this, I know what you're going to say, but this is a good listen. I'm not kidding. Um, there's energy. There's an energy in this album that you don't get from very many albums. There's an energy and a happiness and just this positive, good vibe on this record. This is a fun listen. And I'm not kidding. 
and I highly recommend this. If you see this in your record store for a couple bucks, pick it up. And I'm not kidding you. This is a fantastic listen. Um, right from the top, the first, Hold It Tight was great. Utah was really good. Um, of course, Crazy Horses. It's been a week or two since I listened to it, so I don't remember that many of the songs. But there was a couple mellow songs with a bunch of rocking tunes. And um, this is a good listen. The Osmonds, Crazy Horses. Pick it up. You, uh, you won't be sorry, I don't think. Um, that's about all I got to say about that one. Trying to put these back while I go. Next up, we've got this, which I played when I got it and sort of ignored it after that. This is Courtney Barnett's first album, but it's not really. This is her first two uh, EPs put together as one album. Um, she's an Australian singer-songwriter, rock chick kind of girl. And this is the, um, um, I forget what you even call it. But you know it's a um, for the co for the cause um, kind of thing. And I'll just show one record, but um, they are on pink vinyl. And um, she, Courtney Barnett, is an interesting um, singer-songwriter. Her her lyrics are very um, poetic, but they're self-deprecating. And she's just a really good writer. If you don't know who Courtney Barnett is, I, I say check her out. Um, she's really good. I enjoyed both EPs. Avant Gardner may be the track that you may have heard before on here. Um, trying to think what else I know. Can Tomatoes Whole, maybe. Porcelain is really good. Everything on here is interesting. She's an interesting artist. And um, an artist that more, more more people should know. I haven't heard. I know her second album, and I haven't listened to anything really after that. So I'm as guilty as everybody else. But she's really cool. This next one blew me away. I don't know if I ever play. I've had this for quite a while. I've played tracks, but I don't know if I ever sat down and listened to this before. This is a band called The Stripes, who are just, look at them, they're just a bunch of tykes. Um, the album, I forget, Snapshot by The Stripes, and um, these guys are cool. This album blew me away. This is, this has become like one of my favorite modern records. This came out in 2013. Um, there's your track list. These guys are like a modern day garage band, but they've got a lot of blues influence in them, as well as punk. So, it's a punk blues garage band. Um, it's, it's like, they're, they're sort of like, um, the closest thing I can come up with is the Shadows of Night, but like the Shadows of Night on steroids. Um, these guys just rock, and they do, they do some great covers on here as well as their originals are great, but their version of I'm a Hog for You Baby is fantastic. And You Can't Judge a Book by the Cover is, um, that's one of the reasons I equate them to Shadows of Night, because they did that too. And in the same vein, but this just, just propels at a thousand miles an hour. This thing is just fantastic. And um, they cover Nick Lowe's Heart of the City. They just do a, like a punk rave up of that. That's the other, that's the other, you know, the Yardbirds had an album called Having a Rave Up. That's what this album is. This album, Having a Rave Up, describes this album perfectly. This, these guys are just fantastic. I don't know if this album's still in print, but if you see it, pick it up. The Stripes, Snapshot. There's the labels, and um, this is my pick for uh, for this round easily. This is just a fantastic record. If you like, if you like punk, and if you like pop, because it's not it's not punk like um, I don't know, 
you know, like it, angry, nasty punk. It's punk like, you know, garage punk. It's it's got definite pop sensibilities, but it's loud. You know, it's it's faster. It's faster than Green Day. It's more garagey than Green Day. It's fiercer. It's got more energy and a bit more angst. It, it's just good stuff. And last but not least out of my top five is a guy you probably never heard of. Peter Sarstadt. Where do you go to my lovely? I've owned this album for quite a long time. Scanned a few tracks on it before. Um, this is another promo copy. Um, and But I've never given the album its appropriate due. It's on... Um, World Pacific and this guy if you don't know who he is he's he's folky but he's he's pop psych folky um I guess Donovan is the closest I could come he's got the, those sort of floaty lyrics a very ethereal voice and he is he's an interesting guy his his Claim to Fame is the title cut of this album, Where Do You Go To My Lovely. And if you've ever seen um, Wes Anderson's movie, gosh, I forget what it's called. Um, the one where they take a something express. <laughs> I haven't done any research for this movie. But um, there's a short before that film and this song is featured in that short where do you go to my lovely but it's there, there's there's ethereal folk things on here and then some of it really rocks with like heavy bass and you know like when donovan rocked but even well, harder than that and rockier than that and just cool stuff it's a cool album um again you should be able to find it and it shouldn't be expensive, and it's an overlooked gem. This is an overlooked pop psych gem with some folk touches. So, great album. Peter Sarstedt, Where Do You Go To, My Lovely. And that's it. That's five from the shelf for this week. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Learned something, got something from it. And, uh... That's about it. I'm still doing my podcast, snapcracklepop.podomatic.com. Check that out. And um, also check out Stephen Schnee's super special Christmas special over on Stephen Schnee's channel. I did a separate video for that. It's just so cool and so good. I'm going to be watching it quite a few times before the holidays, and I hope he keeps it up so that I can watch it next year and the year after. It's one of those. You just want to watch it again, and you want to see it every year, and it's good. Steven Schnee, you did an excellent job. Okay, that's it for this one. I hope, again, everybody is doing well, and um, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching, and uh, take care, everybody. Bye.